Now, for each of these eigenvalues, I'm going to do now the spectrum. I'm going to identify the associated eigenvectors. And here's my argument for that. I'll start with the value 1 first, which in terms of mu, it's the value 5. So when I take a matrix A take, A take I3, so if I take this matrix with lambda specifically being 1, it will be this matrix with mu specifically being 5. So here's my matrix. Negative 4, 0, 2, first row from here. 0, negative 5, 0, second row from here. 2, 0, negative 1, last row from the same matrix. In order to find, I need to find the vector. Let me just pull it up a little bit. If I want to finish the spectral analysis, if I want to find the eigenvector, I need to find the vector x, which is non-zero on one hand. And on the other hand, it's the vector which is the solution, which is in the null space of this matrix. To do that, it's a row echelon form analysis. So I need to con convert this matrix to the row echelon form. I do it with the help of the computer algebra system. If I take it to the row echelon form, that's, kind of that's the kind of matrix I will come up with. Here it is. Negative 1, 0, 1. It's the first row from here, just scaled, uh, no, scaled by 1 half. Uh, 0, 1, 0, and the last one is 0. We have a non-leading column, which means we need to parameterize things. We will always have a non-leading column, as a matter of fact, when you go for the eigenvector. So if I parameterize the third unknown, st, my second unknown from second row becomes 0. And the th uh, first unknown from the first row, if you solve here for x1, it will be 1 half of x3, like in here. And because x3 is t, it's 1 half of t. If you combine your solution into the vector form, that will be t times 1 half for the first component, 0 for the second component, and 1 for the last component. Or if you factor out 1 half, it will be t on 1 half, 1 for the first, 0, and 2 for the second. And here's the first. We finished the analysis. I mean, we half finished the analysis. I found the eigenvector for the first eigenvalue we have found before. But the observation now, I make it straight away. Look at the vector we come up with. It's the vector, which is the my b vector. The b vector which gave rise to my projection, this b vector. And that's the first thing which I'd like to emphasize right now. For the projection map, there will always be an eigenvalue, 1, and the eigenvector associated to that eigenvalue will be the vector b at the base of your projection map. So now if I just write up the uh, eigen subspace which correspond to the value 1, it will be just a span of my b vector. Okay, let's now do the analysis for the second eigenvalue. Second eigenvalue, lambda equals 0. Again, for this eigenvalue, I need to find the associated eigenvector. So I need to take this matrix, uh, this matrix, A take 0 identity, which basically just the A matrix, because identity vanishes. Uh, and I need to find the vector x, which is in the null space of the A matrix itself, isn't it? All right, the A matrix, well, it's, it's up here, but you can also take this one and put mu 0 here across the diagonal. So here's my A matrix again. Here's my A matrix again. If I take this matrix to the row echelon form, again, I just use, I did this with the help of the computer algebra system. That is what the computer algebra system gave me. It's the matrix with the 1, 0, 2 first row, and the other two rows, 0. So as a matter of fact, we have two non-leading columns. It's the first time you see a spectral analysis where when you go after the eigenvalue, I uh, sorry, eigenvector, you have two non-leading columns. Well, we're not going to panic, of course. We're just going to proceed the way we're supposed to. We're just going to introduce two parameters this time because we have two non-leading columns. So here's my solution. X3 unknown will be T. I need a second parameter. I'll, I will use the letter S for that. X2 will be S. 
And x1 can be solved from the first row. x1 is a negative 2x3, which is negative 2t. And that's a complete solution, complete description of my null space of the matrix A. If I now present the vector form of this description, here it is. X vector, it's a T times, what happens with T? Look at this. Negative 2 for the first entry, uh, 0 for the second entry, and 1 for the last entry. Plus S times which vector? No S here, so 0 first component. 1 of S here, second component, and no S here, 0 component. Here's my description in vector form of all possible solutions for the second one. Right, so the second, uh, the eigen subspace, which is, a which is associated with the value zero now, it's a span of two vectors. One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. It's a span of the vectors negative two, zero, one, and the vector zero, one, zero. And here comes my second observation, which is specifically attached to the projection maps. If you look carefully at these two vectors, let me just give names to this thing. Let me call this one C vector and this one D vector. If you look at these two vectors, you can see that C vector is perpendicular to the B vector. This B vector. Oh, the, the B vector which gave rise to my projection map. And you can also see that D vector also perpendicular to the B vector. You can also see actually that C and D in between themselves are perpendicular. These two are also perpendicular. You can also see this, but this is more like a coincidence, in fact. I mean, you with some extra effort, even though it goes it goes beyond this, beyond this, the content of this topic. You can always achieve the uh, uh, you can always achieve two perpendicular vectors when you describe the span of two vectors. But in, in, in the context of the projection map, this is more like a coincidence. But it's these two things that the eigenvectors which is so which are associated with the zero eigenvalue always perpendicular to the vector which produces the projection. This is a, this is a, not a coincidence. It's one of the fundamental properties of projection maps. Any questions? So on this slide, not only I gave you the another opportunity of the spectral analysis without any reference to any projection maps, I also showed you two interesting properties of the projection map. First one is that projection map always has two eigenvalues, zero and one, and nothing else. No matter, in fact, no matter of the no matter how large the dimension is, there will be there will always be two eigenvalues only. The eigenvalue which is associated to, to, associated to the value 1 is my B vector, the one which at the base of my projection. And the eigenvalues which are associated to the 0 value, they may be different, but all we know about them, all of them will be perpendicular to the B vector.